Hi, good morning and good welcome. Good morning. <laughs> We're at the Stockholm United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Wally Schwarz, and this is my wife, Linda. Hi there. Today is the third Sunday of Advent, and we're so happy that you're going to be with us today. Mm -hmm. I know. It's a good day, beautiful day. Amazing day outside. It is like spring it's out like there. It's springtime. It's like, <laughs> wow. It's wonderful. A little extra gift, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. And then before the big snowstorm. <laughs> That's exactly right. <laughs> exactly right. A little of everything this week, I guess. So let's start our service with Ted's prelude. You got it. Thank you, Ted. Beautiful, beautiful. Very appropriate for the, the season and the day. So let's uh, turn our attention over here to our call to worship. Prayer call to worship. Unclog your ears. Listen for the voice breaking through the winds of the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord. Watch, Watch for the light. the light. Adjust your eyes. The true light is coming to illumine us too. Witness, Witness for the light. When the world questions, neglects, and denies this light, unlock your mouths. Speak, Speak the, the truth, truth of this light. Look alive. Take notice. One who is greater is coming. We celebrate and bear witness to the, the gift of the true light. light. Amen. Come, Come, let us Come, let us worship. Come, let us worship. <laughs> All righty. Well, let's do it. We have a song to sing. Ted's going to start us today. And uh, let's come on over here and... Uh, Start in on that. How many verses do you want to do? We will do, uh, we'll do the, 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 the whole, so this is the song, Do You Hear What, uh, I, do hear. You hear what I Hear. Are you going no, do the whole thing. The whole thing. Huh. Okay. All right. Just two measures into it. That's what okay. we're throwing it out during okay. the service. Okay, very good. sky little land do you hear what I hear <coughs> oh, dancing in the night with a tail as big as a kite with a tail as big as a kite and the little lamb to the shepherd boy Shepherd boy, do you hear what I hear? A song, a song, high above the trees with a voice as big as the sea. With a voice as big as the sea. Said the shepherd boy to the mighty king. Thank you. 
Thank you, Ted. Now, we have a kind of a fun song to sing. Uh, I have to tell you that this song's been going through my mind all week because if you watch our kids' show uh, with, in the middle of the week when uh, Kyler and Brady and I were doing a little t talk on the cameras this week, well, we've been singing this song um, uh, called I Got the Joy, 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 Joy Down in My Heart. I can't get it out of my head. And this week is the third week of Advent. It's the candle of joy. So I guess we have to sing it. Yeah. Let's do it. Okay? So sing along with us. Sing you along. You don't need though. the words. The words aren't posted, but it's kind of simple. I'm going to stand here so that light isn't too bright behind me. All right. Here we go. I got the joy. I got the joy. I got to lose. Oh, we got to move it up. We got to move it up. I got the joy. Here we go. Now we're going. Now we're cooking. I got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. I got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart to stay. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I've got the love of Jesus in my heart. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I've got the love of Jesus in my heart. I got the love of Jesus, love of Jesus down in my heart. Down in my heart, down in my heart. I got the love of Jesus, love of Jesus down in my heart. Down in my heart to stay. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I've got the love of Jesus in my heart. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I've got the love of Jesus in my heart. I got the peace that passes understanding down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. I got the peace that passes understanding down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart to stay. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I've got the love of Jesus in my heart. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I've got the love of Jesus in my heart. I've got the love of Jesus in my heart. <laughs> the fun song, isn't it? The great song. Yeah. And it's really true. It might be a kid's song. We sing it as a kid's song, but you know what? You don't have to be a kid to sing that song. Let's pray. Let's have a little word with a look with the Father. Father, thank you for this opportunity to be in this wonderful place today, worshiping you, and with all of our friends on Facebook, Lord, and who are watching this, Lord, we pray for them. We ask you for every single person who watches now or through the week, Lord, bless them with the joy of the Lord. Let it be strong in their life. In your mighty name, amen. 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 Hmm. All righty. Now. now it's time for our prayer requests and praise reports and things to lift up before the Lord, right? That's Am I right. right. Am I right? You are Am right. I right? Am I finally He's right? He's always right. <laughs> no, not. never. Not usually. Not. <laughs> <laughs> this time I am, though. So let's see. Who's, uh, who's got a prayer request? Just type it on in there and we'll see it as it comes up and hopefully we'll see it when it comes up. And we'll lift them up to you. I have a couple of prayer requests I want to lift up today. Uh, two, two very important ones. Uh, one of them is They're for all a, important. The, okay, yeah, okay. <laughs> Thank you for the correction. <laughs> they are all important, aren't they? They are Just all saying. important. But these are two that are on my mind, uh, especially to say to you. Number one, we have a good friend, good friend Rick Gallagher. Uh, Rick and Sophie have been, oh gosh, they're members of my church 40 years ago. And Rick has COVID and had been fighting it and been fighting a problem with his lungs and you know, the breathing and then the blood clots in his lungs. And it's been a touch and go week for him. Uh, so I would really like us to lift up him to you, to the Lord and uh, remember him. That's Rick. Now, the another one, a very important one too uh, to mention is uh, Caroline, a uh, young lady who I work with or used to work with. Uh, and she uh, got married back a little while back. She and Artem and they're having a baby. Now, they're having the baby today. And I received a text this morning. Uh, she's in labor. And just to pray that, that labor would go well, that she wouldn't need a C-section or other intervention, that it would just be an easier one, right? And so let's pray for her, that God bless her with that. 
And so now that I've gotten those two out of the way, do we have some others that have popped uh, up? Well, we have prayers for Annabelle's brother. Mm -hmm. and, um, and hi, Annabelle, we see you out there. And um, prayers for Nancy. And mm -hmm. praise for Dennis. And he even got a stand-up wheelchair this week. Dennis, So amazing. he can help chop onions. This yeah. is a very exciting thing. <laughs> he hasn't been on his feet since the accident. And get things out of the cabinet <coughs> the high sh off the high shelf. It's been like a year and a half since he had that accident. It's the first time on his feet. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's just wonderful to see. Great. Yeah. And he's been laying in, in one mm -hmm. position for two months, so ah. it's a big deal. And um, prayers for... I can't, I can't see without my glasses. Praise the Lord for I have joy in my heart every day. That's right. That's right, Beth. Beth. Thank you, Beth. That's right. Praise God for joy. But I, um, that, that leads me directly into a prayer request I have for everyone who is not feeling joy in their heart right mm. now. And, um, you know, we talk about joy as if it's like this instant thing that we can just conjure up. And it isn't always that, mm. even with faith. And so as much as God hopes that for us, we... Um, Many people are not feeling joy. So for those, my prayer is for the request is for those who are not feeling that or have lost mm -hmm. someone during the holidays or recently mm -hmm. this year and this holiday is different. And of course, because this holiday is actually different for the world. So um, prayers for the world in that yes. sense. Right. And Leon, that's right, thank you. And Leonora mentioned about Pam. You should say a little something about her, yeah. right? I'll let you do it because you saw Yeah, her. so Jean and I went to see Pam yesterday mm. out through the window of her of the rehab. She's in quarantine for two weeks, and she is Pam all the way. Um, mm. She's scarred and bruised from all the surgeries, and, and, and I'm sure she's rather weak. But she, her soul is mm -hmm. there, and she is present, and her color was good. And so that was a really big blessing because mm. we are so happy we didn't lose her. Mm. Yeah, that's right. And Sandy's uh, asked for prayers for her grandson, Jake, who has COVID right mm -hmm. now. Bob Manier His mentioned, family. yes, fam family members have COVID. Prayers right for now. Joe Giordano, um, mm -hmm. who is, yes, who is going right. through a lot right now. So yes. prayers for him and for his wife, Loretta. Mm. Yeah. Wonderful friends of ours. Members of this church for many years, although they've moved away now. And uh, is there any, anybody oh, else? Like, this is a good one. Oh. Rebecca performed last night. All right. So All right. she has praises. And um, she was very inspired, and I'm sure she inspired many others as well, mm -hmm. as she always does. Rebecca, we love you. Uh, it's good to hear that. Well, prayers for everybody who is um, who is struggling with any kind of illness. Right. You know. Yeah, and we've got we got a number of folks here that on Sunday morning <coughs> mentioned, like Peter, you know, and uh, and Fred, uh, with his his problem, breathing problems. Lord, uh, we just want to lift them up to you too. So, and and I, my I kind of have a I don't know mm -hmm. if it's a prayer exactly. I guess so. Um, that that we have more interaction, more conversations, mm -hmm. engagement with each other because we've become so accustomed to texting that it is more comfort comfortable sometimes mm -hmm. and easier and less intrusive and all that. And so, um, I would suggest. Or just offer up that um, that if you're inclined to take, just kind of go past your comfort zone and start making phone calls again, mm. because we are so isolated and need to connect more. Mm -hmm. That's right. Can't can't really replace your voice, right? Not also, really, the not inflections really, not in the long of run. what you're thinking and saying, mm -hmm. right? Well, well, you very go, good. Pastor? Let's take the like take these requests and any we might have missed or any that may not have been said, or if you're watching this program and you're not on us with us live at the minute. Well, just lift yours up at the same time. We're going to offer them all to the Lord. Father, we offer up these requests to you today. Lord, we ask you for your supernatural touch into every need that has been on every heart and in every life, Lord, of those who are connected with us. Father, we pray for our physical congregation. We pray for our internet congregation, who's also a physical con congregation, but they're just not here with us right now. So, Lord, we pray for them, Lord, all. Lord, let every one of us walk in the joy of, of your salvation, of knowing you and being uh, full of your spirit. We pray this in Jesus' name, and we pray the prayer that you taught us to pray. Our Father, Father who, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come thy, thy will be done, done on earth, earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but but deliver deliver us from from evil. For For thine thine is the the kingdom kingdom and the power and the glory forever. forever. Amen. 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 Well, it's time for the Advent candle lighting. Yes, time for the Advent candle lighting. We can't forget that. And Wally and I are going to light it today. Okay. With you. So let me turn the camera over there. Why don't you head over there, Linda? Mm-hmm. And we'll take up the... Oh, now everybody gets to see our microphone there. <laughs> we're going to turn it around like this for a minute. There we go. And there we go. A little tricky getting everybody in there. I guess that's pretty good, right? We'll blow that up a little bit so you can see us a little bit better. There we go. Wonderful. Perfect. We want everything to look nice. The decorations of the season, our homes with their lights and tinsel, wreaths and ribbons. We want to lighten the darkness around us, bring beauty to the ugliness that wears us down. We decorate because it is tradition, because it lifts our hearts, because it makes us feel like children again. We deck our halls because company is coming. The prophet Isaiah smiled when he said, God will give us a garment, a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, a mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. No matter how far we feel from the, may feel from the spirit of the season this year, God promises to decorate us with love and joy. We light these candles. I'll get on the other side. Okay. We light these candles as a sign of our joy in the beautiful things of this season. Not just the things that glitter and flash, but the deeper things. The beauty of the heart, the beauty of the soul, the beauty of love shared in service and hospitality. We light this candle of joy because company is coming. And here's the candle of joy this week. Join us in singing the first verse of O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. O come, O come, Emmanuel. And ransom captive Israel that mourns in lowly exile here until the Son of God. Buster was with us there. And may the dog be with you. That's right. (laughs) Well, let's move this over. And there we go. You should come up a little bit here. All right. There you go. Move it up a little bit. Go ahead. You sit down for a second. And how is that? Is that better? It's okay. A little better? Yeah. So I just want to read a little prayer from the Cory Miela community that I sometimes love to share. And... um, This one just touched me this week. God in the return to a simplified Christmas, God in the advent of extravagant joy, may we who are so accustomed to connecting happiness with an accumulation of things receive the gift of valuing the connections we already have. May a stripped down celebration and a slower pace to the holiday reveal the treasure that was ours all along. And may we find in the strangeness of this year's Christmas the wonder that was present in its first incarnation. Amen. Hmm. Amen. That's very beautiful, nice. Right? Beautiful. Yeah. That's I very that was beautiful. Very beautiful. Okay, let me move this over a little bit here, and we will get back in the picture. Okay. Very good. Now we have a we have music from Ted. We have music from Ted. So. Ted, <laughs> turn the, we'll turn it back over to you. Here we go. Lovely piece written by John Ruder, Nativity Carol. <laughs>
Wiseland from distant far land, shepherds from starry hills, worship this babe so rare, hearts with holy fills are aware, silent. In that stable was born, into our hearts to flow. Innocent dreaming babe, make me thy love to know. Far aware, silent he born to take. For Christ is born for born on Christmas Day. Beautiful, Ted. Thank Ted, you. Ted, what is it? What's the name of that song? Nativity Carol. Nativity by Carol. By John Ruder. Just beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Now we're just going to turn things around here. And I'm going to move this just a, a second. There we go. All righty. Now we're time up now for the scripture reading, are we? That, that no, doxology. The doxology. This is normally our <laughs> offering time. StockholmUMC.org if you're, you're led to leave a donation. That's our website. And, um, to the don scroll down to the donate button, but we now <coughs> thank you in advance for. Yes, thank you. It's, it's really, really appreciated, and we really need it. And thank you. Um, so we have a we have we always sing doxology. the doxology. So let's do that. Okay. <coughs> Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Nice to sing that with you. Every single week. I know I say the same thing every week. I love that. All righty. Well, now before uh, are we up to the scripture reading, we are just before we started, uh, you know, um, this week uh, I spoke to Gail Taddeo and she mentioned to me, she would like us to mention the birthdays uh, and anniversaries during our service because they can't see, see them or they don't hear them on the Sunday morning. Um, and I think they're in our bulletin, aren't they? So maybe we just mention them a little bit here. Well, quick. so what, what I um, have to say then is that one of the reasons I haven't been bringing them up is because we have a lot of new congregation members and oh, we don't know true. their birthdays. We don't know yours. And so it's very exclusive to tell us just these birthdays and not everybody else's new, all the new people's birthdays. So if you want to tell us your birthdays, that would be kind of Let fun. Know and, your birthday. and we will put you in our calendar as part of our congregation because you are. That would be very cool. Mm -hmm. We'd like that. Because we don't, be yeah, cool. I don't want to leave. Or, or at least, or tell us your, if there's a birthday this week. Mm -hmm. Well, this week, what we, got, who we know about. Uh, is Irene Little's birthday comes up on December 15th. Gail Taddeo herself comes up this week, actually. And Jean Crow and Dennis DiMario, uh, their anniversary is on the 18th. And Gail, Gail is the 16th, Irene's the 15th, and then they're on the 18th. So we got boom, 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 almost right yeah, in a row. Right. Right. So you know what we do on the Sunday morning when we do this? We sing happy birthday. So let's do that real quick. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. So let us know yours, okay? 
we'll sing, we'll, we'll sing happy birthday to you too. That would be great. <laughs> That'd be great. Very, very good. Thank you. Well, let's get right down to the Word of God today. Here you go. Linda's going to read it for us. Scripture reading today is from the second chapter of Luke, verses 8 to 20. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angel had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off, and they found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds had said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God, and for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Excellent reading. Thank you. Wonderful. Linda, would you go over? You may want to just take care of that little candle that's burning down pretty far over there. Thank you. And, um, and Welcome. It's good to see you guys. Uh, we have a, just a couple things also I just need to share. Well, I'm going to ask um, you to sit in my seat. Oh, it might be a little better there. Yeah, it might be a little better background, right? Thank you, Linda. Much That's much better background, right? A um, couple little things I want to just mention. Uh, Two also, uh, during our morning service, uh, uh, it was brought up that a suggestion to, uh, you know, a lot of us send Christmas cards. Some do, some don't. But, uh, but the... Uh, the suggestion was to say, why don't you send your Christmas card this time instead of everybody in the church, send it to the church. And what we'll do is we'll put it over there on our Christmas tree and we'll make a Christmas tree full of cards. That's, um, all right, that's kind of a cool idea, right? We'll try that. They did it years ago. Uh, I don't remember before we were here a long time ago. But the point is, is that uh, it'd be kind of a cool thing to do. So you can send them to Stockholm United Methodist Church uh, and the address is 27 Route 515, Stockholm, New Jersey, 07460. And we'll put them right over there, okay? Yeah, you can drop in your mailbox too, sure. Uh, also, um, we have um, a Bible study coming up this week. Uh, if you'd like to turn in on it, we're doing the book of Revelations. We're going to be in Revelation 6 and 7. And if you'd like to come on at 7 o'clock uh, on Wednesday night, what I need you to do is just to go on to my email, uh, or our email. It's Pastor Wally1, P-A-S-T-O-R, Wally, W-A-L-L-Y-1 at gmail.com and let us know you'd like to, to come and then we'll send you the link and you can pop on with us and uh, that's a lot of fun that, that Wednesday night Bible study we do it every other week and then finally lastly we've got a lot of things to tell you Christmas season here uh, poinsettias uh, we sell poinsettias Lori uh, Haggett uh, handles that this is the last week we need to know if you would want to order a poinsettia uh, to please uh, let us know uh, or let Lori know Lori Haggett uh, or us, either one, we'll, we'll communicate it, uh, and uh, you can have a beautiful, beautiful she got a beautiful point set of plants, so, okay? All righty, well, very good. I guess that probably wraps, I hope it wraps up all the things that have to be said. Um, have a few things, too, also. Oh, I got one more thing to tell you, I just thought of. You know what? About six weeks ago, I started put, uploading all of our services and kids' programs and stuff onto YouTube. So you can see this also on YouTube. Um, and uh, it's a little redundant, but they're always there, going to be there. And uh, so you just type in Stockholm United Methodist Church, and up will come our church channel. Yeah, that's pretty cool. But listen, here's what we need. I just put it on there. I only got like one or two subscribers. We need I have a lot of subscribers on the church channel. You can also see Pastor Wally is uh, the same thing. We got two different things there. But please, look it up and subscribe, would you? That just means you, you literally link, you'll, you'll see later on to one of our videos. Um, it would make it look a lot better. All right, well, anyway, now let's start for the real meat of the morning. 
Uh, we uh, always start out with something funny, and I got a funny little story for you here today. Uh, this is called Learning to Swim. Well, here's, here's a story. You see, once there was this woman in her mid-60s, and she suddenly decided she wanted to learn how to swim. She never knew how to swim. She was going to learn how to swim, and instead of going to bingo, which is what her, she usually did, and all her friends from bingo said, how come you changed your, you know, your uh, interests? Why, why are you learning how to swim? Well, the lady with a look of helplessness said to them, she said, well, whenever my son and my daughter-in-law get into a fight with each other, my daughter-in-law always ends up asking my son, if your mom and I were both to fall in the water, which one of us would you save first? Well, my son never answers her because he doesn't know what to say. So because I don't want to put him in that kind of difficult situation, I'm learning how to swim. Well, a few days later, her son and his wife were quarreling again. And the daughter-in-law unreasonably asked, it, Now tell me, if your mom and I fell into the water, whom, whom will you save first? The husband replied, Look, I don't have to get into the water now, because my mom knows how to swim. She'll save you. The wife refused to relent. No, 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 no. You have to jump into the water and save one of us. Which one will it be? And her husband replied, Well, I'm sorry to say this. You're going to die. Because my mom knows how to swim, and I don't, and she's going to save me first. <laughs> oh, well. No, no recorded laughter here today. I hope you find that funny. I hope that puts a smile on your face. And uh, try not to use that as a close to an argument. <laughs> anyway, today we want to talk about uh, the sub subject of joy. And the scripture that Linda read to us was from Luke uh, chapter 2. And it's a wonderful story. It's one of my favorite part of the Christmas stories, actually, is when the angel appears to the shepherds. It's a very, very cool part of the story because what happens is, is that the, the shepherds aren't expecting it. They're out in the fields. It says they're tending their fields by night. And they had to sleep out in the fields. Can you imagine that, just sleeping out in the fields with, your, with, the, with the sheep? Have to be out living out there. Um, you have to be a real outdoors person to like to do that. And they're out there and... Uh, uh, and all of a sudden, one of them looks up and sees, and they, they all looked up and saw at the same time, an angel, an angel appeared in the sky. And the angel says to them, and they were scared. It says, it's, let me read that verse. It says, an angel of the Lord suddenly stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. Suddenly they're in this massive light, and they were terribly frightened. But the angel said to them, don't be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which will be for all the people. For, to you, for today, in the city of David, there has been born for you a Savior who is Christ the Lord. Hmm. Well, you know, a couple of things strike me out of this story. One of them is the fact that, you know, the angels were there and suddenly they saw it. And then the next verse is right on down. And the next verse says, and suddenly, again, suddenly, boom, there appeared with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host. Now, I don't think a multitude was like a handful or even a hundred. I'll bet you there were thousands of them up there. It was like Westminster Cathedral full, right? <laughs> the whole sky was full of angels. That's what, I, that's what it seems like to me. And they were all praising God and worshiping. Now, you know, it doesn't say that all the angels filed in one by one and took their places. No, they were all there. They were all ready to go, right? And you know what that says to me? It says to me that around us, there's a world of spiritual things happening. World, there are angels, there are things happening, there's demons as well. There's all kinds of spiritual things happening around us that our eyes, our physical eyes, don't see. You know, your physical eyes only see a little fraction of the, of the electromagnetic spectrum. Don't you know that, right? The, four, uh, the seven colors that you see, there are a little slit between radio waves and microwaves on the other end. I mean, there's a massive amount of radiation passing all around us that we don't see. Now, that's just in the physical. What about the spiritual? We don't see normally in the spiritual realm. We don't see the angels. We don't see the, the, the hosts around us. It takes a revelation to see it. God has to let you see it. God has to open your eyes up to see it. And so the, the, the shepherds are there, and boom, all of a sudden, it's like the lights go on, and there's light all around them, and the angel is there talking to them, and then the next minute, all of a sudden, they see full, the whole sky's full of angels. Powerful stuff, isn't it? I wonder what is around me that I don't know about. 
I wonder about when, I, when I'm in a, what I think is a dangerous situation. I wonder what angels are walking around protecting me and you. I wonder. We don't see it. But in a flash, God could reveal it. And God did reveal it to the shepherds. Now, here's the, that's kind of a side. But here's the one thing I really want to talk about. The angel said to the shepherds, he said, look, I'm bringing you news of great joy that will be to all the people. Now, I don't know about you. A lot of us know those verses by heart because we've heard them every Christmas read, right? But when I've always read, when I've heard that verse read, I've always thought that what it was talking about was that the angel's bringing news for everybody. But it's interesting that he says, news, how does he, he, he phrase it? News of great joy, which will be to all the people. In other words, he's not just bringing news. He's bringing news about great joy. Great joy, which will be to everybody. Joy for everyone. Everyone who will receive it, that is, right? The news is about a joy that you can receive. And so that's what we want to talk about today. We want to talk about the joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord, it says in the Bible, is your strength. Isaiah said, the joy of the Lord is your strength. Because as you walk in him, as you, have, you cultivate your relationship with God, one of the key things that you experience is joy. In fact, if you don't ever get joy in your life, you've got to kind of like stop and say, what's, what's going on here? Because the Holy Spirit brings that into you. Now, you might be in some really t- tough situations right now. You might be in a situation where it's very hard to be, feel joy. You might be uh, dealing with great loss or, or trouble. Uh, God understands that. This joy we're talking about isn't a joy that's based on circumstances, though. It's a joy that comes from knowing that you are connected to the one who controls everything in the universe and that he is for you, not against you. This joy comes from a reality that is brought to you through the Holy Spirit that this is all true. And that's why you need to feed your relationship with God. You do. Because if you don't, there's a lot of things in this world that will just pull you aside and preoccupy you and pull you down eventually because you need to receive this. I need it every day. I need every day. I have to say, Holy Spirit, please pour yourself into my life afresh. Let me feel the kingdom of God afresh today. Let me let my ears be responsive to you. Let me know what you're doing. Speak to me. Give me the counsel of God. Let me know that, you're, that, that I'm with you and that you're in me, that I can feel. Let me feel it. Because sometimes we just don't feel it. Sometimes we have to take it by faith and go right through it. See, it's easy to worship God when things are good. And it's not bad to do that. I'm not making fun of that. I mean, this morning was a beautiful, beautiful spring-like morning. Oh, my gosh, it was just so nice, right? I walked outside, and I thought... Mm, smells great out here. It's just incredibly beautiful for December. And I just started thinking, thank you, Lord. Thank you for a wonderful day. So sometimes the, the good things in your life are certainly a springboard, uh, like a diving board to jump off into worship and to thank God and start worshiping him in your heart. But some days it may not be so pretty. And sometimes all those things may be against you. You might be, instead of having the wind to your back, you got the wind to your front. In those kind of days, you have to make a choice. You choose to worship your way through it. You choose to worship God in spite of it. Because you know what? See, here's the wonderful thing about being a Christian, knowing God, is that God is in your life. And it says in Romans 8, 28, that God is going to work all things together for your good if you love the Lord, according to his purpose, because he's called you. Okay? So if you know, if 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 you're connected to him, you're going to receive in your life divine intervention daily some some of it you'll see some of it you won't see it'll just happen things will happen but god is always guiding things if you submit your agenda to his agenda you know the wonderful thing about god is he's so good many times he gives you your agenda anyway it says delight yourself in the lord it says in in psalm i think 37 delight yourself to to the uh, in the lord and he will give you the desires of your heart You see, God is so good that he knows the things you want and need. He also knows the things that you might want that really destroy you right now or would really burden you down or pull you away from him. So we have to trust his time and trust his wisdom because he knows what he's doing. Oh, God, does he know what he's doing? The Lord is moving a plan in your life to make you like Christ, to make his spirit shine in you and to give you great joy, even if you're not feeling it now. You see, 
Uh, scripture says, there's a scripture in the Old Testament that says, uh, weeping may last for the night, but joy comes in the morning. Even if you're in sorrow, even if things are against you, God can come, come to you and turn them around. So worship him in spite of it, in spite of the circumstances. Weather the storm and go through it to the other side. You know, uh, Jesus said that there was a, Jesus gave a wonderful parable. He talked about a man who found treasure in a field and then decided that he was going to sell everything that he had to go buy the field so he could have the treasure, right? And I think about that and I think like that's bending yourself to God. That's bending yourself in God's direction, right? That guy had to go give up everything. He had to sell everything. Why did he have to sell everything? Because he needed the money to buy the field. It was, it, he, that was all he had to sell everything he had in order to buy it. But he wasn't going to cared about the field. He cared about the treasure that was in the field. Do you want Christ in your life like that? That's what he's talking about. He's talking about, are you willing to abandon everything else and come follow me? Do you remember when Jesus said to the disciples, he said, well, somebody came up to him one day and said, Lord, I'll follow you wherever you go. And Jesus, instead of saying, great, I'm so glad to hear that, instead of saying that, he turns to the guy and he goes, listen, foxes have their holes and birds of the air have their nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. <laughs> Well, that certainly wasn't the answer that I would have expected him to give. But you know what? If you think about it, you know why he said it. Because that guy wanted to come. He, wanted, he was probably seeing Jesus heal people. He was probably seeing all kinds of wonderful things happening. The kind of things you just love to be in and love to have. But Jesus was basically telling him, you've got to give up everything to come follow me because I've got no place to lay my head. I'm a pilgrim in this world just doing what God wants me to do. Are you willing to do that too? Hmm. The rich young ruler came to him one time and said, good teacher, he says, you know, uh, ever since I was a child, he says, I've always done what God wants me to do. I've followed all the commandments. I've done everything in the law. I've done everything right. He says, what more do I need? The Lord looked and looked right through him. I can just see this. The Lord looking right through to the intention of his heart. And he could see the good things. It says the Lord Jesus looked at him and loved him, you know, because of what he could see. But he, he went to the man's heart and he said, okay. Go sell all that you have and give it to the poor. You'll have treasure in heaven. And then come follow me. It says the man went away very sad because he had great riches. The young ruler, could, young man could not give it all away. Hmm. Hmm. Do you see the kingdom of God in your life as the biggest thing in the world? Do you want that more than anything else? That's how, you, that's how you are an inheritor, a possessor of the joy of the Lord. Is because, you know what? This world might not look like the best place to be, but you are uni will be united with Christ who walks with you, who doesn't leave you alone. You're never alone because he who rules the universe, he who guides and controls everything around you is with you. He's for you, not against you, Paul said. God is for us, not against us. Wow, when you come to Christ... God is for you. Now, before you do that, before you make a decision to follow Jesus Christ and be his follower, well, you know what? You're on the other side of things. Yeah, you may not be. A, maybe you're not the, the worst criminal in the world. But if your life is unsubmitted to Christ, if you're living for your own self, no matter how good that might be, if it's not for Christ, it's just as bad as anything else. It'll keep you from the joy of the Lord. It'll keep you from his power. It'll keep you from the fellowship of Christ in your heart and being transformed. You see, you can be a very good person and miss the boat. Because what does God consider good? God considers good those who love him and who follow his son. Because his blessing is on Jesus. So I want to be with Jesus because that's where his blessing is. And if I belong to him, I get it too. You get it too. That's what it's all about. That's the good news of the gospel. You don't have to go earn it. You go and receive it, but it'll cost you your life. Are you willing to give it? Are you willing to be a disciple? Are you willing to follow him through everything? Then you know what? Then all things will be yours in the end. And you know what? This world is not all there is. Part of having Christ in your life, part of the joy of the Lord that comes into you, is the knowing the reality that there's another world that everything that goes on here isn't just for nothing. Paul said that. He said, listen, if we're, the, if we're only believing in Christ for this world, if there's no world to come, if there's no resurrection, there's nothing else, we're the stupidest people of all. 
because we're just giving things away for free for nothing. But God, because there is a world to come, God takes note of every single thing. Every single thing you do, every good thing you do, and everything you do for Him and for His kingdom, everything that you do in, in listening to the Spirit of God and, and, and going and following that voice, that is precious to the Father. He has chosen to call you to follow Him, that you may choose to do it. Mm, so powerful. Part of that joy is, is knowing that you have a purpose in this world, that this world doesn't all revolve around you. Your purpose, isn't, your purpose in the world is not all your purposes, it's God's purposes. Part of that reality is knowing that God is just with you everywhere you go. You never can, you, you, you're never like on your own, not if you're listening to the Holy Spirit, because he's partnering with you. He's your partner. He's with you. You're following him, but he is with you. <laughs> it's such a wonderful thing to be a Christian. It's like really insane not to be. It's insane not to walk with God. It's futile, I guess. That's the better word, futile. Because in the end, you'll lose everything. But if you will walk with God, you'll gain everything. You'll gain the world. You're not alone. He's working everything around. Well, another thing that the Lord, I think, shows you too, with the joy that comes into your heart, is an awareness that you may not see how things might be possible, but you know that with God, all things are possible. There is nothing he can't change. One of the little word of the day cards I did this week was about, um, he brought me up out of the terrible pit. He pulled me up out of the muddy mire. He set my feet upon a rock. There's no pit that's too deep for him to pull you out of. There's no place that you've screwed up so bad or no amount of time that's gone behind you that has disqualified you if today you'll follow him. Mm -hmm. So the joy of the Lord, which is your strength, you see, it doesn't come from religion. It comes from knowing him. And, and everything, that, that, well, everything that you can desire, everything that you ultimately will desire, is found in knowing Christ. Paul wrote, he said, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I'll say, just rejoice. Paul said, I know how to be content in all circumstances, whether good or bad. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Well, I think that's really what I want to share with you today. I hope that encourages you. I want to encourage you. I feel the Spirit of God is in, moving in me to tell you to draw close and stay close. And if things aren't going your way and things are, are seem against you, God is for you. God will turn the things that are against you for you in the end. Just hold on to Him. Hold on to Him. Like somebody going down a t on a toboggan down a windy hill and it's going miles. Just hold on to that toboggan because God is behind you and beneath you and around you and leading the way. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you so much. Thank you so much for your grace in our lives. Thank you for, for all the good things that you've brought us. And thank you that you get us through all the trials and troubles too. Lord, thank you that there's no device of the dark side that can pull us away from you. There's, Satan has no power, Lord, uh, over your good plans in our lives. So, Lord, we yield ourselves to you, to your good plans. Lord, we desire to, to be your followers in this world. In Jesus' name, let the joy of the Lord be strong in each one. Amen. Amen. Well, Linda, come on over here. There we go. Um, nice to see you again. You too. <laughs> so it's time to sing Joy to the World. Oh, yeah. Great hymn. Great, great Christmas carol too, right? Hopefully you'll sing along at home. Do we have the words? Yep. <clears throat> here we go. Joy to the world, the 
Savior reigns. Let all their songs implore. Broadest fields and floods, rocks, hills, and plains. Repeat the sounding joy. Repeat the sounding joy. Repeat, repeat the sounding joy. No more let sins and sorrows grow, nor thorns infest the ground. He comes to make his blessings flow, far as the curse is found, far as the curse is found, far as, far as the curse is found. He rules the world with truth and grace, and makes the nations prove the glories of his righteousness. Wonders of his love, and wonders of his love, and wonders, wonders of his love. <laughs> A great song, huh? Hey, now I the saw, ultimate Christmas song. It is the ultimate Christmas song. I think it's the number one on the charts. Yeah. The, uh, I saw, uh, Loretta, it looked to me like Loretta Giordano wanted to come online here with us for a second. I'm going to push that button and see if it works. You think she meant it? I think so. Loretta, did you mean it? Well, we're going to touch it and see what happens, okay? But she might not want to be on. You better find out. <laughs> if she's at home well, having it said in she her did. pajamas. It said she did. Do you want to come on? Hi, Margaret. We miss you and no, love you. Uh, Margaret. And there's Jane over there in, in uh, Nigeria. She's she been a recent on. friend. Opio. Simon. Simon yeah. Opio. Yeah. It's really cool. You know, this goes all over the place. And we're just so glad for ha gaining friends we everywhere, are. right? It's really kind of cool. <laughs> yes, sir. Well, um, well, we're going to, I'm going to push the button. So Loretta, it, there she is. Hi, Loretta. Do you, do you want, want to come, come on? on screen, or was that a mistake? We're waiting Say for yes the or no. We see hi. <laughs> Say yes or no. I don't think she knew she pushed the button. Think so? Yeah, we don't want to catch somebody in their pajamas because then for their <laughs> their sake we're going to be on here too, right? <laughs> well, well, we hope that you have a wonderful week. We hope that uh, the joy of the Lord is strong for yes. you. Oh, she says, yes, good, touch it. There you go. 